Ibanez is known from thin, super flat necks. This one is not like the others, I find it's definitely not thin, definitely not flat. Hello, this is Michal and welcome to the EB Register, where my mission is to document every Ibanez guitar ever made. And today we're gonna just make another step towards this goal. In 2003 I bought my first ever Ibanez. Uh, I bought it new from the store, I could barely afford it even though it was just Korean uh, RG370. I made a video about it, you can check it out here. And um, But around that time I was like salivating towards few other models that were like way higher up in the catalog. And uh, 15 years later, when I uh, got back to playing, I found one of them and bought it. So behold, the Ibanez MMM1, Mike Mushok model number one there was only one made by ibanez so before we go into more details please comment if there was ever any ibanez that you really wanted to have and if you got it later on i was so lucky to get this one there are a few others on the list but we'll get there when i look at it in the catalog back then in 2003 uh, it had a lot of cool features that i didn't understand but they sounded cool it is a baritone it is a neck through, it has very heavy breech with a, a sustain block and it's also string through. All those things on paper suggest that it has a crazy sustain and it does. So Mike Muschek was Ibanez artist uh, until 2007. I don't know when it started and his personal guitars were made by, uh, were made by LACS, uh, LA Custom Shop. Uh, and they were quite interesting. They looked like modified SZ series or modified Art Hill series. They were like very rounded and elongated. They kind of looked like Art Hill bodies or, uh, or just bass guitar bodies. Uh, and they were like natural wood uh, or silver burst. So when you look at some of his photos playing, he either played this kind of like wood creation or silver burst and uh, Actually, pictures with this guitar you can only see in like official release photos. So the production model, the, the mass production model, I guess they went with something that's like more affordable. So they based it on one of the existing models and they picked SZ series. The SZ series was produced between 2003 and 2012. So they were designed as a kind of Gibson killer PRS like guitar, double cutaway, two humbuckers, fixed bridge, uh, 25 and one inch scale. So it's shorter than standard Ibanez Fender scale, longer than a uh, Gibson scale, and around what usually PRS are built in. Um, so even though it's based of S series, it has actually very thick body with arched top. Uh, all SZs are uh, set in neck uh, or neck through. And uh, nearly all of them similar to SC series, uh, even Prestige were made in Korea. That was the same period when uh, uh, I talked about SA series that were made in Korea. So there was one model, the first one, SZ 1220, that uh, was made in Japan. Another thing characteristic for the SZ series of guitars, the headstock shape. You can see it kind of have some resembles to the pointy design of known from the RG series but it's much wider and shorter to accommodate the 3 plus 3 uh, layout of the tuners. This particular model, the MMM1, was produced between 2003 and 2007. Uh, in 2007 when Mike moved to a PRS obviously the production of this stopped. They're not so easy to find on second hand market you're looking at prices between 700 to 900 euros, at least in the European market. And yeah, apart from this, the fact this is like baritone scale, it has all the other features of the SZ series. So what does it mean baritone scale? So the usual guitar scale, so the length between the nut and the saddles, the active length of the strings, sits somewhere between 24 and half, let's say, let's say 75 for the Gibson scale, 
to 25 and a half for the fender uh, uh, that's in inches and uh, wherever we say that something is uh, over 26 inches we usually say it's baritone scale the allows for the lower tunings at uh, a similar tension without uh, much changing of the uh, string gouge if you keep the scale short and would like to have a lower tuning you either have to go to the lower uh, to the higher gouge strings so thicker strings or a lower tension so they get sloppy by the time this guitar was introduced in 2003 Ibanez already had some successful experiments with the baritone scale the, in early 2000s there were a few models of the RG series with the XL scale those uh, 27 inch uh, uh, so they were like uh, lower budget RG 470 XL and there was also R970 XL and also 1077 which was a 7 string with 27 inch scale and in current production series for example RGD series are uh, nearly all, all baritone scale because they are in the 26.5 inches and uh, somewhere between 30 inches we move away from baritones to bass uh, territory so for example there's this six string bass from Ibanez uh, SRC6 I think so th they call it a uh, crossover bass so it has six strings very low string spacings 30 inches of uh, scale you can either treat it as a baritone or uh, as a bass I guess depending on your approach in my opinion it's more similar to guitar but uh, yeah it's from the bass series the classic baritone tuning is five frets down so it's very similar to what you have six bottom strings on the uh, seven string guitar there will be some difference on the G string because uh, yeah scales and the uh, music muff but uh, it's very similar I think I have it tuned uh, six semitones down from standard or maybe actually I have it tuned like seven string right now because I was playing some corn last week on this guitar <laughs> Three baritone is like, for example, very good if you want to play some seven string stuff uh, or low stuff without really needing the the higher spectrum. If you just play riffs or something like that, and you don't want to have extra string, then baritone is perfect for that stuff. The uh, because of the scale is longer, the frets are wider, uh, which uh, feels a bit tough at the beginning, but you get used to it. And then when you learn to play something on that guitar and move back to RG for example it's like you feel like you leveled up because it's so much easier all right so let's talk specs uh, this guitar has a body made out of mahogany it's quite heavy because it's also quite thick uh, and mahogany depending on the piece of wood you get but uh, is generally a bit heavier wood the neck is three pieces uh, mahogany and purple wood so there's like this nice dark purplish stripe in the middle looks really nice the neck is pretty round and pretty thick so it measures around 21 uh, and a half millimeters at the uh, first fret and 23 millimeters on the last so in comparison it's like four millimeters thicker than the wizard it doesn't seem much but it's like 25 percent thicker than the wizard the fretboard is from rosewood there are no markers uh, there is a cream binding which I think I wouldn't like, but it actually works with the wooden finish. There are only, the only markers are the side dots, so you can see them from the top, but they're not uh, visible from the front. I actually like this view of the fretboard without anything. Uh, there is a huge volute on the uh, back of the headstock. Uh, it doesn't really bother you, it's just like, you know, 
it looks disproportionately big, but it doesn't cause any trouble in playing, in my opinion. The tuners are Korean made and uh, I think one of them is already like broken. I'll probably have to change them sooner or later. Quite a lot of people I see uh, upgrade the tuners to uh, locking tuners and the nut to something better because it's a plastic nut. Uh, it also doesn't look like well put into the slot. So uh, probably one of the upgrades I'll have to think about. Chrome hardware, uh, two humbuckers, they're called Super 58s. Custom 58s, uh, Custom Super 58s. They relate to the uh, Super 58, which is like one of the legendary Ibanez pickup made by Maxon in the uh, late 60s and early 70s. But those are not those pickups, they just share a similar name. They're like very PAF style, they have moderate output. Sounds quite good, but a lot of people, because they use baritone to play like uh, heavy music, uh, upgrade those pickups. Uh, to like EMGs or uh, DMARC deactivators. I don't know, I, I'm okay with those pickups, but maybe at some point I'll try something else. The electronics uh, controls are super simple, three-way switch. So we have either of, of the humbuckers or both in the middle position, volume and tone, and the bridge. Bridge is called Gibraltar Custom and was made by Ibanez specifically for that model. And then it appeared in a few other models as especially in the so-called like Nectar 700 series. There were a few guitars uh, in the late 2000s, early 2010s that uh, had a Nectar construction, this heavy fixed bridge, and they were all called like 700. So there was like DTT 700 for Destroyer with Nectar, ICT for Iceman, Flying V kind of guitar called V-Blade, VBT 700. And I think there was like a few more of them. Very interesting guitars, made in Indonesia, quite affordable uh, and like, you know, really cool. So this bridge has a, a metal block that's like uh, sitting inside the wood and like screw it in with a few screws. And then the actual bridge with quite a big uh, intonation margin is screwed into that block. So the whole thing weighs around half a kilo or over a pound like the block and the bridge, it's massive, it feels massive. And when you play on those strings, uh, the whole guitar is uh, shaking and resonating, it feels really cool. And I think uh, the bridge, the neck through, the string through, all those things uh, help in that effect. Yeah, so this was kind of like a childhood hero that I was following and I got it and I'm not disappointed. It's really great guitar. All SZ series are really good guitars, surprisingly good. So if you have a chance, uh, now people kind of discovered them that are really good. And they're raising in prices on like, you know, reverb or Facebook marketplace. But if you found some, some of them cheap, just grab it and test it. It's not your usual Ibanez, but those are really cool guitars. And uh, this, this is just epic. The interesting situation with the uh, MM1 and General SD series is the cases because they don't feel fit the SD series doesn't fit the normal RG or S series shaped case and uh, I didn't bought, buy this guitar new so I bought it actually with the gig bag. I think it came with like rectangular case and most of the SD Prestige came with a rectangular case but the SD2020 EX there are kind of like EMG equipped metal looking version of the SZZ actually came with the Prestige case. So I managed to find and buy this case and even though it's for the SZ with uh, 25.1 inch scale I decided to give it a try. So I'm gonna show you how the MMM1 fits into that case. So here it is. It looks like a normal Prestige case with the red lining you can see that the shape here is different. Usually it's more triangular on the top. And uh, yeah, it's different than the regular Prestige case because the SZ fits very nicely and snug in here. And because it's a baritone with a longer scale, it kind of touches here. Uh, so it's not perfect. It could use like a three, four centimeters and like two inches more of space. 
but it works. So I'm aware that there are at least three shapes of the Prestige case. There's the regu regular RG S series, there's SZ series, that one, that's pretty rare. And also very rare is for the FR series. Cases are interesting topic. I could make a whole another episode about all different cases and how they fit and so on. So uh, let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in. All right. So that's another video of documenting every Ibanez guitar ever made. That was another one from my personal collection. Um, thanks for watching and see you in around two weeks. Thank <laughs> you.